in people that have had enough children, they don't ever want to have children again. So these are the methods of birth control and I said they are used and they are proper for married couples who want to space their children for proper planning. We'll now be looking at the reproductive systems and reproduction in humans. Reproduction in humans, that's what we'll be looking at. And first, under that topic, we'll be looking at the structure of the male reproductive system. We've done this in the SS2 class, but it's still part of the SS3 syllabus, and that is why we have to go through it again. The male reproductive organ consists of the testes, the epididymises, the urethra, the penis, the prostate gland, the corpus gland. Now, the testes are, the, are first situated in the lower part of the abdomen, but immediately after birth, they descend into a part, into a pair of sacs called the scrota sacs. Each testis is attached to the base of the scrota sac by a strand consisting mainly of elastic tissues called the gubernaculum. Each testis is also made up of coiled tubules known as the seminiferous tubules in which the sperms are produced. So you can see the function or the importance of the testis and this is just a diagram there. The scrotum is the sac, then the testis is inside it, then you see the epididymises on top of it. Then the, the epididymises is a very long coil to formed outside the testis but still in the scrotal sac. Then it removes and stores sperm temporarily. It is connected to the sperm dots or the vas different. Then each sperm dot or vas different joins a duct from a sperm storing sac. The seminal vesicle and now forms an ejaculatory duct. The third one is the penis. The seminal vesicle opens into the urethra. The penis is the medium through which the urine comes out. That is, the urethra is connected to it. Also, it functions as a point where sperm also comes out too. So it leads to the exterior. The, the urethra leads to the exterior through the penis. Then the penis has a rectal skin covering its end region, known as the glans penis. Semen is expelled from its penis by powerful contraction of the urethra in the process of ejaculation. So semen comes out from the penis in the, uh, during ejaculation. Then the reflex, me me reflex mechanism inhibits urination during ejaculation. You know, I said both semen and urine comes out from the penis, but by reason of this, the, the divine design or the design of the male body, both don't occur at the same time. When urination is when ejaculation is going on, then urination cannot happen. The prostate gland, the prostate gland surrounds the urethra where the bladder enters it. You know. The bladder stores urine for a while, that is, it stores urine temporarily, then it passes it through to the urethra, which then goes out. So, the posterior glands around the urethra where the bladder enters it, then it produces a fluid to activate the sperms, feed and prevent them from sticking together. So, the gland secretes a fluid that activates the sperm, it feeds the sperm, and also prevents them from sticking together. The corpus gland is located just below the prostate gland. It produces fluid whose exact function is unknown. It washes the, prostate, the corpus gland washes out traces of urine in the urethra before ejaculation of the seminal fluid, you know, so that there is no mixture of the semen with urine. So the corpus gland washes out traces of urine in the urethra during ejaculation of the seminal fluid. The secretions are supplied by the seminal vesicle, corpus gland, and prostrate glands. Now, to the structure of the female reproductive system, it consists of the urethras, the oviducts, the ovary, the cervix, the vagina, urethra, and the vulva. So we'll be looking at the functions of these parts of the system. The first is the ovaries. The ovaries produce the egg or the ovaries, ova, which is the one that is being fertilized by the sperm to become an embryo. 
Then the fallopian tube, or what we call the oviduct, it's a place where ripe ovum passes through from the ovary to the uretros. So from that diagram, you see the ovary, the ovary there, then the oviduct is the one holding the ovary before it is being moved to the uretros. Then fertilization takes place in the oviduct. That is very, very critical. You should know that, that in the fallopian tube the oviduct, fertilization takes place because that is where ripe ovum stays. Then the vagina. The vagina is the muscular tube that leads to the exterior, opening just before the urethra. tract. It's an opening, just as we have in the penis, that is an opening to the exterior. The vagina is also an opening that just before the urethra. tract. In the vagina is the place where the male penis is inserted during mating or sexual intercourse. Then the vagina is also the passage for fetus during childbirth, during birth. So vagina is also called the bar canal because that is where the fetus passes through. Then the vagina may be partially covered at the entrance by a thin mucous membrane called the hymen. It's usually filled with blood. It's it is found in females that have not had sexual intercourse. It may be removed by sexual activities or sometimes by rigorous exercise. So it's a thin membrane that covers, that partly covers the entrance of the vagina and it's called the hymen. Then the next one is the uterus or the womb. The uterus is the muscular organ with mucous membrane lining called the endometrium. Then, it is the location for the development and the protection of the fertilized egg. You know, I said fertilization occurs in the oviducts. That's the fallopian tube. So, after fertilization, the fertilized egg or the zygote moves into the womb or the uterus for development. That is where it stays. That's where the zygote stays till birth. It is, up, it is during birth. Maybe when birth process is about to start, that it starts moving. From the womb. So that's it. The womb is the place of protection and development for the zygote. Then the uterus divides many times to make a ball of cells called the embryo. The cervix is the lower narrow end of the uterus, that is of the womb. It leads to the vagina. The cervix is the entrance of the womb, like an opening to the womb. That's where the, the baby will come out through the cervix when the, uh, the cervix opens. Then the cervix also regulates opening and closing of the vagina during childbirth. Then the vulva. The vulva is the collective term for the external female reproductive or the genital parts. And the vulva is the final opening to the outside of the vagina. It includes the labia majora, that's the outer lip, and the labia minora, that's the inner lip, which are pairs of fleshy folds of tissue surrounding the vulva. The clitoris is the small, sensitive, rod-like structure that corresponds to the penis in the female. It is erectile in nature and becomes studied when filled with blood during sexual excitement. It helps to stimulate the female during sexual intercourse. Then, the differences between the male and the female reproductive organs. First, the, in the male, testes are in the scrotal sac and they are outside the body. But in female, ovaries are located inside the female body. You don't see the ovaries of the female. Except maybe the person is dead or by surgical operation, but the testes you can see. Then the, in the male, we have the epididymises present. In the female, mm -hmm. it is absent. Then sperms are produced by the testes. In female, eggs are produced by the ovary. Then in the male, the sperms pass out via the urethra. In the female, Eggs pass into the oviduct or the fallopian tube. In the male, you have a sperm dust present, why it is absent in the female. Seminal vesicle present in the male, it is absent in the female. Prostate glands, you find it in the male, but you don't have it in the female. Corpus gland is also present in the male, it is absent in the female. Penis is present in the male, you don't have it in the female. Ovid oviduct is absent in the male, but you have oviducts. That is the fallopian tube in the female. Uterus, which is also the womb, womb is absent in the male, but uterus is present in the female. Vagina is absent in the male, you have vagina present in the female. Cervix is absent in the male, you have cervix in the female. Vulva is absent in the male, 
then we have vulvar <coughs> present in the female. Now we want to move to talk about the structure and the function of the sperm cell. The sperm cell is a small motor mature male reproductive cell formed in the testes and it comprises of the head, the middle piece and the long tail. So the sperm cell is divided into three portions, the head, the middle piece and the long tail. The head is filled mainly with nucleus containing the parent's genetic material, that is the DNA. So the head of the sperm cell contains the DNA and it's the one that fuses with the nucleus of the egg during the fertilization. So the nucleus of the male gametes, that is the sperm cell, fuses with the nucleus of the egg cell, so during fertilization. Then the egg is located at the anterior end of the edge. You have located at the anterior end of the egg is a projection called the acrosome. It forms a thin cap over the nucleus. The acrosome contains lytic enzyme which dissolves the egg membrane, thus enabling sperm to enter and fertilize the egg. So this acrosome is the one that like break the edge of the egg membrane. So it is easy for the sperm to penetrate through the egg and fertilize it. The middle piece contains mitochondria which in that is rich in respiratory enzymes and it generates energy used by the sperm cell to swim towards the egg. You know, the sperm cell has to swim into the female 